Guys, you know what time it is. The Batman, our review, our reaction, starting right now. Welcome back to the Jersey Comic Crew, guys. It is Chris. It is yeah. Rob. We are here to talk The Batman. We're reviewing it. We're reacting to it. We just saw it last night. We're still absolutely crazed over it. And <laughs> yes. uh, it was three hours that almost went by in a, in a loud horse-powered blur, Rob. Oh my what God. did you think of the Batman right off the bat? I want to know. I right know. off the bat, the setting, Gotham City. It felt dark and dreary. It felt like a terrible place to live. felt like slumlords everywhere. It felt like everything happens in Gotham. They did that part very right with this. The score throughout the movie, I loved it. Fantastic. That Batman theme, when he was fighting, when it was action-packed, I thought it was right on par with everything else that we see with superhero movies. It was very enjoyable to me. Chris, I, I think this is safe to say this might be one of my favorite live action Batmans, right? Yeah. Uh, we do know that this Batman, context guys, it's within the first two years of him being Batman. So some of the stuff that we're used to seeing in a Batman movie, we don't see, right? Like, he's a lot of times he's on his motorcycle. And I'm, I'm sure people are like, why is he always on his motorcycle? He's not used to flying yet. Like, we saw him do one fly scene in this. He gets immediately slammed into the bridge underneath. I was laughing hysterically. My audience was quiet. I was like, fuck you guys, right? <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I think Robert Pattinson has a very bright future being the Dark Knight. This brings me to my question to you guys as the audience and obviously to my co-host here, Chris. Chris, this version of Batman, Robert Pattinson's Batman, how did it strike with you? Dude, it struck home with me. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Okay. I didn't feel the pace of three hours. I thought it flew by true i love that it the action in it i love the not action in it i love the detective story if anyone who knows me that is watching this knows i'm a sucker for a david fincher thriller i love seven is one of my favorite thriller movies in the 90s so is uh zodiac love zodiac and this was basically superhero david fincher style movie making um i agree with everything you said rob it's early batman he's not used to stuff and I really like that. It's something we haven't seen in a live action movie before, yeah. right? It's he's not just seamlessly taking everybody out and not getting hit, right? He's yeah. getting hit. He's getting beat. Almost he's getting the shit knocked out of him. The flight suit, he hesitates before he uses it. He's like, oh crap, I gotta do this. Mm -hmm. I also absolutely loved how this movie started off. The monologue, Rob. And if you are a comic fan good, out there, good Batman voice too, by the way. I gotta give great him credit. Batman voice, not not Christian Bailey or like too auto two D or like mm -hmm. T Pain out there, but it was fantastic. The monologue, Gotham was raining twenty four seven. That's fantastic. Yes, great. It's gloomy, it's gringy, it's dark. It was right out of like a Frank Miller book. It was year one. It was a little Dark Knight Returns in there. It was just this fantastic monologue we've never heard. Batman outside of comics do where he's explaining what's going on and I absolutely went nuts. Real quick, you mentioned a couple of things that I want to bring to your attention because we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Yes. Batman fighting and still getting hit and moving forward, right? Him having hesitation and going. That dark monologue. These are big things and it's mystery driven, not just hey, I gotta fight this new thing. Yeah. These are very big points what Daredevil did very well in Netflix. And yeah. this is something I said, you're gonna see a lot of stuff in Daredevil relate directly to this batman and it was they did a fantastic job the fact that this was mystery driven and even me as a comic avid comic reader i'm like where are you taking this mystery i'm excited for the ride what what's yes. it gonna be i was i was enjoying it because it doesn't really follow any comic book and i'm glad that like mo superhero shows are like hey we don't or in movies we don't need to do that we get mm -hmm. to be inspired by it and do our own story it was very well done like this whole mystery that was set up by the riddler was great and this is also a new take on a uh, super villain right chris that we don't yeah. really see too often in superhero movies especially this is also a new take on the riddler which i i enjoyed a lot like this is like recluse guy just trying to do things just trying to like show us the answers if you will and like take down the government and take down all this corruption was pretty cool yeah no that was awesome and and to kind of answer you there it it did feel like you know like i keep saying these david fincher films the riddler was basically, you know, John Doe out of seven. He's Kevin Spacey yeah. character out of seven. All the way up to his actual apartment is basically John Doe's apartment with a thousand notebooks of hieroglyphs and everything. I was getting a massive seven vibes. I love that this was a detective story. This is something as a Batman fan, I've been crying about. We need a detective Batman. It felt like, you know, him and Gordon were 
Great. Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt in seven. It was nuts. Yeah. It was like they were the co buddy cops and this one just had no jurisdiction, right? And I love that, again, this early feel. He's not trusted by Gotham mm -hmm. City yet, right? The cops don't necessarily like him doing their job better, finding out who's corrupt, finding out who's not, and Gordon is kind of the only one on his side. I absolutely love that friendship. I want to see more of that down the line. And Riddler, dude, yeah, this is the Riddler going forward now. I don't know how you go back to the guy in the green and purple suit with the cane swinging no. it around, and even in the comic book, right? Like, this is the ultimate, like, everyone's obsessed with those, like, Netflix killer documentaries. Yeah, this is, this that is like, that in, guy. In superhero movies. Well, and I think he's going to go more towards that, like, kind of dramatic flair. We were getting Maybe. bits and pieces of that throughout the movie. He's like, oh, Riddle does this. It does this for me. Here's the social media thing. Like, he's learning. He's he's getting that flair, setting the cards and stuff. Yeah. I think we're going to get a little bit more of the traditional Riddler, showing the flair, showing all that dramatic stuff, right? Because this one is more like, this was personal. And I was like, oh, I need to keep doing this. This is who I am. And he could up the theatrics a little bit. And I think we're going to get a nice balance. Maybe. Um, Maybe because he, he does say, like, I did this because I was a nobody. Yeah. I was invisible. No one saw me. What uh, what other way to do that than just kind of come have this coming out party of like when he if he comes back when he comes back, which we'll talk about later. But like that would be something as far as an avenue. But I thought his character in this in, and yes. Paul Dano's performance was hauntingly good. Haunting. Um, just even that one scene where he gets arrested in the diner, the way he's just like staring into the camera and the camera kind of yes. zooms was creepy as shit that his conversation with batman at arkham was fantastic and he's like freaking out i i love this kind of like batman noir realism yeah dark and, it, and it, we don't have to connect it to anything else right it's just stuck in this mode right now the other great thing was that like in a way he was the main villain and you didn't see him as much as like some of the other yeah. characters he's behind the scenes doing it but like the threat of the riddler was there which this movie did very well like, yeah. Riddler is like, you don't beat this guy just punching him, right? It's a whole different thing. Like, you have to outsmart him. You have to do this and nail him down. They did yeah. a very good job with this. I'm glad he brought up Gordon, though, bringing it to Gordon. Thought he was a fantastic character. Loved it. I, I love that scene where he's in um, the precinct with all the other cops. Yeah. And he gets punched. He throws him against the wall. Like, that relationship, that trust is there. And I was like, oh, I'm going to love Gordon moving forward. And I can't wait to see him. And anything else that they do with him. Yeah. And Jeffrey Wright is just like the voice, right? Like yes. it is. And, and it's a great choice for Gordon after, like, I know J.K. Simmons did Gordon in, in like the Snyder stuff, but like you had Gary Oldman arguably be the best Jim Gordon and one of the most brilliant actors. And then you bring in a guy like, like Jeffrey Wright, who's phenomenal in every way, too. I loved Gordon's aspect of this. I loved his relationship i loved his relationship with the other cops too where they're like mm -hmm. you know the the commissioner at the time was like dude like we were partners what are you doing like you can't bring this guy into an active crime scene like why not um yeah, like, he's, he's like, gonna figure he's this doing shit <laughs> yeah he's better than everyone else um i love that aspect i like that precinct scene is phenomenal for many reasons one is when the chief yells like oh now you're assaulting an officer and batman just goes i actually assaulted three i was like yes <laughs> like like just the middle finger like he never stops the cops the in this movie was so funny like them running out and like shooting oh, and he's hilarious. flying up i was like great just a thousand of them coming out of it, it was like the nematodes and spongebob yes. they just came out of every me, 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 me. when they went and arrested <laughs> riddler they all charged so into the building and he's like yeah. it's done but like it it's felt <laughs> it felt like this is a whole force and not just like yeah. a handful of cops it actually felt like yeah. everybody was doing it so even that small minute detail <laughs> made it more believable like everybody is out the whole city is out there yes. instead of just being a handful of people so i thought even though it's funny that like oh yeah they're useless it gave us also the sense like everybody's worried about the situation it felt like the end of blues brothers <laughs> where they're running in the building and <laughs> there's like a billion people running after them like it was hilarious i loved it um especially like how they were always late to everything yeah. and like batman already was there uh, but yeah, no, I, I thought Gordon was great. I thought that it was great to also see Gordon in an aspect, Rob, that was not just he's putting the signal on and off and talking to Batman, right? He was in the trenches with he him. He was. He's driving to the locations. He's shooting his gun. He's like in the trenches. Also, he's not commissioner yet. So like mm -hmm. it is Gordon kind of in his lieutenant prime as like this really good cop and kind of the guy who's getting stuff done better than everyone else because he has this relationship with this vigilante. So 
love that. And and another person I thought was fantastic was Zoe Kravitz. Yeah, he said relationship. I knew where you were going with that. So oh I my saw God. that segue. It was a little, little segue action. But I, I thought she was, dude, she not only just does she look the part basically perfectly That's as far as like out of like take a comic book, take like a clay man artwork and just put it as a human being. She just like, had a ski she, mask is all, and I was like, "This is the first year doing it. You'll you'll get a better month, Don't worry." I, yeah, and I, I want. I really wanted that cat mask at the end. I really wanted it, but I I love the like the entire bodysuit, the way she kind of carries herself oh, her walk. Very how well. like every scene you see her, it's kind of like you see her leg first, and you kind of know she's gonna be there. This unspoken allure that Batman slash Bruce has for her, where it's like he he doesn't trust anyone, and like you see that in the beginning, their banter, right? Where yeah. he's just like put this on and he's like not really talking to her but like just that allure of like her her beauty and how she uses it to her advantage and is able to just get information right easy information that no one else could get she's she's fantastic so you guys know i have to talk about this i'm the mushy gushy guy here the whole bat cat relationship i love it like i propose to my wife with a bat cat comic book like this 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 speaks That's home right. to me right like their romance i remember hearing like when they kissed somebody in the back of me was like oh ready and i'm like that's fine, right? And they did this very well because there's the second they meet, even in comic books, there's this immediate chemistry that was there, right? Mm -hmm. And that like she's just like an overt sexual being, right? Not like anything is wrong with that. And he's very reclusive, withdrawn, but like he's like he sees that and like immediately that bond is connected, right? And the fact that they kiss and like that <clears throat> there's this tension and she leaves. I love the fact that she left at the end of this. I was like, great. Yeah, we don't yeah. have to rush into them being together a thing. It's like yep. this. The, it's the beginning of the cat and bat game, right? Like, yep. oh, they'll kiss each other. Cool. He, she robs something. He has to stop her. It's this back and forth. And will they? Won't they? That's going to continue on for, I'm sure, movies or series or whatever they plan to do with this franchise. Very, very well done. I was also happy that she kind of left Gotham at the end. She did say she was going to Bloodhaven. Wink, wink, hint, hint. Um, and I'm interested to see how she comes back. I personally don't think she's going to like meet up with any other necessarily DC characters at the moment. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But I would like to see her like maybe don't even have her in the second movie at all. Right. Maybe she just comes back for the third. Sure. But her in this movie, like I, I even like, you know, usually this stuff gets weirded out and, and kind of, oh, they kind of force this and that. I like that she was Falcone's daughter. Like his oh, illegitimate kid. I thought that was kid. a cool twist. Um, I thought that was a cool twist. I thought it, it met the storyline well. I thought that the Falcone story was oh, kind of this God, undercurrent of like, oh, this is more severe than almost like Riddler's story. This is the undercurrent of everything going on. Uh, the fact that he's the rat, uh, trying to figure yes. out who the rat was, was great. And, but and like, I he it was wasn't even too. really the rat. He was the kingpin of it all, right? It, it was like yeah. a weird double twist. It was it was great, and and I love this detective story, and and something about this movie, Rob, which I kept thinking during the movie, which I loved about it, and what might be what I liked most about it. Yeah, what's up? I couldn't personally figure out the entire story. Yeah, right. Yeah, the I'm mystery, with you. the mystery there was there. A lot of the times, especially with Marvel films, guys, and I don't know if you have this or not, Marvel films and Disney, they're really fun, they're bombastic, they're action packed. But I am someone because the weight of kind of knowing too much when it comes to the That's comics and, and other things, I'm I can easily figure out where the story beats are going in a lot of these films. Mm -hmm. But for a film like this, like a Batman, where it's like this mystery, this thriller, you're a detective, you're trying to figure it out. The audience is figuring it out with Batman and Gordon and everyone else. I did not see where it was going necessarily from piece to piece, right? Mm -hmm. Like you knew kind of the trajectory, but you're like, okay, how is this going to come to a head? Like, what's the yeah. big twist? I'm still figuring that out. I think that's something DC needs to capitalize on once and again, especially with a character like Batman. And I thought that was kind of the brilliance of it. And then Falcone, dude. Like, Falcone, knowing that Bruce's parents were in this. I had that theory last week when we were talking about it, that Bruce's parents weren't going to be innocent. Yeah. And I think they did it really well where, like, yeah, he got saved by his parents. He, you know, then did this thing for him where he takes out this reporter that Bruce's dad didn't want and it was yes. like okay here I love, we go I love the reveal that like oh your parents are terrible by Falcone right who forever will be the the smelly foot guy from Adam Sandler's uh, yes. Mr. Deeds for me absolutely forever and and uh, Transformers and Transformers right yep. but going into Falcone like he's like hey this is the truth I'm so sorry you had this conversation 
Bruce goes to Alfred's bedside. He's like, your father didn't want that. He was distraught. He went to him in a moment of weakness, say to scare him. Falco killed him to have him in his pocket. And like Bruce is like, oh my God, like this. There's like so much drama from back in the day that he has to weigh. It's just not like a clear cut story. There's two sides to every story, right? And that's kind of like the theme in this whole thing. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the penguin. Colin Farrow was the penguin. Lost completely. Yeah, you can't in, see him. You in, can't see in him that at all. prosthetics and like makeup. You can't see him at all. You don't hear him at all. Nuts. He was such a good actor. Like the penguin is a character when they had him tied up. Like you guys, you jerk off is going to leave me here. That car chase scene. Was a oh, lot so of fun when he oh, came over. Oh, the car over. chase is so good. Oh, my God. I Batman got two. Yo. Wa <laughs> walking up to the car had that menacing. And they did that especially well with Batman being menacing in this movie. Him walking up to Penguin, getting that information from Penguin. I was like, oh, my God. This Penguin, this character, he's like just a B-less guy right now. And at the end, when everything explodes, we know that, like, he's going to rise to the top. He's going to be the biggest of the baddest. Cream of the crop. And... Maybe that's what the spin-off show is going to be. How he becomes the cream of the crop after the events of this movie, man. Like, I love the Penguin in this. Like, Colin Farrell did a fantastic job. Such an underrated performance. Dude, they need they need an Oscar at least for, like, the makeup department. Oh, yeah. Um, if not the music department, sound effects. Like, the first of all, the sound of the Batmobile. I was oh, in one of those kind of, like, God. lazy boy chairs, and yeah. it started just rumbling. Like, that car got me excited. Dude, oh, I was completely aroused. But like the the aspect of penguins, the chase, penguin is basically a New York style gangster. Yes, and I love and it. And I love it. And and it's it's great. Like I love the scars on his face. Like he's Ozzy. He's not even the penguin yet. Mm -hmm. I I love that this is a character they're gonna build in this TV show. I love that he's now kind of he was with Maroney, right? Like in the beginning, we know the twist with Maroney that. Falcone set him up yep. and and set him to fall to take over the business, to take more of this money. And, you know, everything that we kind of thought Penguin was, he still has these core values, right? Like, he's not a rat. He's not ratting anybody mm -hmm. out. And the second they found out Falcone was the rat, he was done, right? Like, yep. he flips on him. So I was all about Penguin in this. Colin Farrell did a crazy good job, like, with this makeup, with the voice, with everything. But... I also wanted to touch upon what you just said, that fear tactic, Rob, that that Batman fear tactic. That was something that got me so pumped in the beginning of this film where you have like the regular criminals when he's doing a monologue and they're just like afraid of alleyways. That was so ridiculous. good. That was might be the best part of the simple, whole movie. Simple touch. If, if there's like someone who lives under a rock is like, who's Batman? You show them that like first five minutes. Like, oh. That's all you need to know. Right? He's like like man. It was so good. It was nuts. And like it's just like the people tagging or something, like doing stupid stuff. And it's like you look down the alleyway and You're it like, could not be today. coming out of it. Not today, I'm going home. Like it's that is the point of Batman to put fear in the hearts of those criminals that just stop that in their tracks, in the middle of what they're doing. I can't wait to see what they're gonna do in the future of this franchise and if it's gonna connect with anything else, if it's just gonna be separate. I honestly I don't care at this point. I just want another the Batman movie. So yeah, me too, Rob. I want as many of these movies as they can make, as Matt Reeves will do. I thought it was great. I will say, though, there is one part of the movie that I that just didn't stick with me. What was that? Which I, I don't know if people are hanging on or not. But to me, I thought the movie's unreal and really cool and really great up until the bomb scene at the water gates where the, where the levees where the break gates, and, and the yeah. water flows. I don't know if it's needed. You have this great detective story where it's gringy and hardcore and and it's crazy, right? The stuff that Riddler's sending in videos is crazier than the Joker video from Dark Knight, right? With the rats and the thing yeah, and, and killing the way he kills people and the clues he's leaving behind with fingers and cars and the drive and all this stuff. It's gnarly. It's close and subjective to what he's trying to do, right? He's going after Gotham's elite that are corrupt mm -hmm. and should be helping and they're not, right? So you get to this point where he's like, you know, they have the great conversations like, you don't even know the rest of the plan. It changes from going after the elite to just going after everyone. Okay, so I see what you're saying. That's where I kind of got confused, right? Because that you have this point in the movie where Gordon's like, crap, is he coming after me yet? And Batman's like, no, you're a good cop. Like, you're not corrupt. So you kind of have this code that Riddler lives by. He's going, you know what I mean? Kind of this like very, in a basic term, like the Robin Hood mentality without mm -hmm. being a psychopath. So to kind of break the dam and to release the rivers on everyone seemed a little much 
especially when you could still have the followers of Riddler, which I thought were great. Yeah. The social media aspect, the followers, how people get brainwashed into crazy stuff. I thought you could have that scene with the inauguration of the mayor without the water, and it still works. Yeah, I can see that. And, like, it, it, instead of the bombs there, it could just be around the streets and, like, closed everything off because of the bombs so they could do that. I... I or think just it, the terrorist threat kind of thing in the building. I think the whole water aspect was just more along the lines of you need something vis big and visual. Like the, a big change is coming, right? So I wonder you if you literally a have a wave coming in, knocking everybody down, like it causes much chaos. And then it's going to be the catalyst to cause the big change, like super villains, everybody, this power vacuum that's there. Yeah. yeah. If you would have done it with just like just that scene, right? Like they blow up all the streets, they yeah. attack the people in there, would have still been good. But it just want to give you that extra little punch that you may have needed to explain some of the craziness that's about to come. So I, I also I get it because it's like you're attacking everybody. It was just really a ruse to get everybody flooded in there to attack. I, I'm not crazy about it, but it's also mm -hmm. it doesn't detract anything from me. It was just there. Yeah, so. yeah. It, it was it was just there. And but I think that's why I think I focused on it because it was just there in a movie where nothing's just there. Like right, like everything is on purpose. Um, I got you. And it, and it did have, right, like, it had some great stuff in it. Like, the scene of Batman saving, like, the kid where he cuts the electrical wire so the people don't get electrocuted and, like, basically yeah. sacrificing himself after. Also, great Batman motif. He has something for everything, the adrenaline shot in the leg. Oh, and wow, that was pretty cool. With the hole for the like, adrenaline shot. Um, that, saving the people. The cinematography shot of Batman leading the yeah, people to safety. That was beautiful is beautiful Batman stuff that Rob and I will gush over, right? That, that might be just enough for the water reason alone. Like, hey, I have this amazing shot, and we're like, do it. That's fine. Like, again, for that again, shot, yeah. Could have been done without the water, right? You could still lead the people to safety. When yeah, you're out of darkness, without the water, it could have been everything shut down. I but get I get it. It adds, it adds to the to tension. To but that, and then I think the even bigger one is the people are beginning to trust him, right? The cops, the, the people of Gotham, yeah. the girl he puts into that like body safe to be airlifted to a hospital who doesn't want to let go of him which is so that good. is showing you the people of gotham are be are trusting and like he's their savior he's the protector now and I, I feel like those moments rob are absolutely beautiful in in the lore of batman and the batman we know and love from the comic books and stuff the way we feel about batman all the time yeah people that not necessarily read this stuff get to see it for maybe the first time I'm so glad we're getting a Gotham where Batman and them are on the same page. So often, I feel like movies are so quick to turn on Batman. Yeah. Like, everybody's against him. The city's against him. He has to do his own thing. I think we could enjoy for a little while, especially if this is young Batman, him working with the city doing that. Because for his comic book career, that was a big part of it. But, guys, it's safe to say we absolutely love this movie. Uh, we're going to watch it probably a thousand more times. Be on the lookout. We're going to do some more videos about, you know, maybe who that mystery character was in the prison, what we think this Batman stands up against other Batman movies, how it connects. Stay tuned within the next couple of weeks. We're going to have more for you. And guys, thank you so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Like really helps the channel out a lot. If you're new, subscribe. Turn on those notifications. You do not want to miss any of our Batman coverage that Rob literally just told you about. Yeah. You've got to be subscribed and make sure you don't miss it. And as always, my name is Chris Heller. That's Rob Moran. We're the Jersey Comic Crew, and we'll see you next time.